Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Team Next Generation Team Call. It is Wednesday, March 15th, and tonight I am very excited to be able to introduce our guest caller, Miss Amy Patterson, and she is going to talk to us. You know what? I'm going to tell you what. I don't even know everything you're talking to us about because Gianna didn't tell me anything. She, all I know so far is I know that you're a five-star elite. Am I correct? Please correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Okay, You're a five-star elite. You hit elite last year, which guys is amazing. You were you were two star. You were at the new leader conference. You were two star. Like in the beginning of the year, like, when did we go? When was the new leader conference? That was January. January, you were two star, five star elite by the end of the year. That's impressive to put it lightly. Um, you're a mom of three kids. You did one. You you became five star elite while you had three kids and one under the age of one, right? Yes. <laughs> That's impressive within itself. So uh, um, I know there's some stuff in there I'm, I'm missing because I, I didn't get a ton. But uh, nonetheless, I am really excited because I know you and I know how incredible you're running your business right now. So anything you share is going to be huge, huge for us. So I really appreciate it. I'm going to turn this over to you and allow you to share everything that you can, <laughs> everything you have with us. So I appreciate it. And it's all yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And actually, that's kind of a perfect introduction because after how my day went today with like sick kids and all this, like I, you know, just went out and told my husband, I'm like, okay, um, I'm, I don't feel as prepared as I would like to for this, but I'm just going to freestyle. And he's like, that's okay, mama. Like you, you could just go do your thing. Cause really I feel like one of my strong suits. One thing that I just love to do as a coach and as a leader of a team is I really just like to get people pumped up and excited about their business. And I think that goes hand in hand with vision, which is kind of what I talked to Deanna about speaking on is your vision for your business and, but not only for your business, but for your life and how that kind of propels things and causes movement and momentum in your business. And you start to see things happen and it's exciting. And so, um, you know, that's kind of my main goal tonight is to hopefully just get you guys, you know, excited about your business. If you need like a little revival, um, because, one thing is, you know, that I've realized over the past two and a half years of being a coach is that, you know, things change, your life changes, you have different experiences, different, you know, events happen in life. Um, you know, at different times in your life, you have different things that are a priority or a want or a need. And so it kind of changes, you know, your vision is definitely something that, you know, it's not just a set thing, but it is good to try to get some clarity on it. So um, I will tell you, you know, so I signed up in August of 2014 as a coach and I signed up under Stephanie Davies, if you guys are familiar with her. And um, really, I probably would say my whole first year as a coach, I mean, the whole idea of a, of a vision or vision board, I just thought was like child's play. I'm like, so you're telling me to like sit down, cut up some magazines and make a little vision board collage, like Mod Podge it like I would do in middle school. Like the whole, I heard coaches talking about it and I just did not get it. But you know, what happened was, is as I, you know, progressed in my coaching journey and, you know, I got to the point where I decided that I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously and not just as like this little hobby. Um, because definitely, you know, the first year of coaching for me really was, just about, you know, the natural extension of like, hey, I just want to do this for my own accountability. If I can help some other moms along the way that are, you know, busy like me, then that would be a bonus. Um, you know, if I can make some extra grocery money along the way, that would be a bonus. But as I started to see these, you know, smaller goals unfold in the beginning, and I, it was like, it started to reveal that vision to me, like for my family and kind of like things that I didn't realize were deep down desires that I realized that I now had this opportunity with Beachbody to like, act on those desires. So, um, you know, and act on this vision that I may have not otherwise thought was a possibility. Um, so anyways, before I go any further, I actually made like a tiny little slideshow presentation, which honestly, I'm not that fancy really usually, but, um, I, since I have major mommy brain, especially today, I kind of just made a really short little slideshow and it's more or less just to 
you know, hopefully give me some guidance so I don't just go off on a complete tangent. So I'm going to try to do that and share my screen. Um, so give me just a sec here and um, hopefully somebody can let me know that, you know, you see it and everything because, like I said, not usually that fancy. Yes, we see it. We're good. Okay, cool. Okay. So here is my fancy little slideshow. Um, okay. So vision. Um, like I said, a little bit about me. I'm a wife to my high school sweetheart, Seth. Um, we've been married for almost 10 years and a mom of these three cuties, Jillian, Annika, and Graham. And Graham was born about three weeks after the new leader conference last year. Um, so yeah, that, that was definitely like a crazy thing, you know, trying to balance having a new baby and, you know, still growing my team and all that. So um, I'm a nurse. I worked as a nurse for about a decade, but I I recently resigned from my nursing job to stay home with my babies. So that kind of just goes along with what I was saying as far as, you know, Beachbody really opened up the opportunity for me to stay home with them. Whereas I don't think I would have really even thought that was an option in the past. You know, um, I went back to work after the girls, you know, it was just, a, it was just like, you're going back to work. There wasn't a choice in the matter. And then after I had Graham in February and I was on maternity leave, you know, that's when the option came up where we were like, okay, we actually, if I want to stay home, I can. It was like, I couldn't believe that we actually had that, you know, that decision to make. So anyways, um, other things about me, just so you know, a little background. I'm a yogi, um, major coffee addict and wine lover. We kind of live out in wine country. Um, if you guys are familiar with, you know, um, I don't know where everybody's out and about, but um we have become kind of big wine lovers, which I know probably this team, you know, can relate to that. Beachbody coach of two and a half years, like I said. Um, so getting back to vision, like I said, I, um, you know, I didn't really see the importance of having a vision in the first year of my business. Um, but as things started to unfold for me and um, I started to see the potential there was with Beachbody, um, I started to realize more and more um, how important it is to have a vision for your business and for your life. And um, I like to think of it as um, you're hopping on this train and the train has a final destination. You've got to know where it's going. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys heard, um, there was this, uh, summer Tucker, who's, um, a longtime coach, uh, made this YouTube video. And, um, I think it kind of went viral within some of our team pages, but she was talking about, you know, how she felt that the missing piece for so many coaches was that they didn't have a clear vision. They didn't know where they were going with their business. And so you kind of just float around, you know, making this turn here, that turn, but you don't really have like a clear vision of where you're going. And if you don't have any idea of where you're going and you know, or maybe you do know where you're going, but you haven't shared that, you know, with your team or with your family or friends or people who are important to you, then you're not going to get people jumping on your train. Like no one's going to get on a train and they don't know where it's going. Right. So I like that analogy for vision. Um, and that was something that just really stuck in my brain last year after I heard that video where I was like, okay, you know, um, what do I really want out of this now? Um, so here's a few little kind of definitions of vision, but you know, it's more than just defining your why. And I know we hear about that a lot as, you know, coaches, um, you know, everybody's like, what's your why? What's your why? Why are you doing this? Um, and I think that that is just the first step to then, you know, creating your vision. So once you figure out why you're doing this and those deep seated reasons, not just, you know, I want to get healthy and I want to make a little bit of extra money, but really like peeling back the onion on your why, um, that deeper reason, you know, the, the why that makes you cry, like they said. Um, but once you kind of really delve into that, then creating your vision for your future is really all about kind of having belief that, you know, you can, um, you know, have something that you don't have yet and trusting in the process and committing. Um, you know, if you're not committed, you know, to your business, whether it's you want to make it a full-time business or a hobby or part-time thing, if you're not a hundred percent committed to it, like, you know, you're going to 
not have a very clear road of where you're going, you're not going to get people excited about jumping on board with you. And so getting that vision super clear um, is going to, you know, help you define what action steps are necessary to get there. Um, and, you know, one thing I like to put out there is just, you know, the fact that this has been a learning thing for me over the last year where I've realized that, you know, decisions that I've made in my business and actions that I've taken and then seen, you know, those things come to fruition has, has just made me realize that we have, you know, more control over, you know, things. I don't want to say like our destiny because I don't, I believe, you know, in something different for that. But I just feel like, you know, our decisions and actions can change so much for us. And there are a lot of people out there who are just, they're okay with the mediocre. They feel they're stuck in a rut, but they're not willing to do anything to change that. And they lack vision for their future. They're just kind of living day to day. So, um, you know, creating a vision is something that should just get you really excited. Um, and then it kind of propels you in your business building activities. So kind of how to break down your vision. First, I would say finding clarity. So like I said, just really sitting down, kind of writing down like, where do you want to see your business in a year or in two years or in five years? Where, where do you want to be in your life too? Like I said, this is not just about your business. Like your vision is way bigger than that. And so um, writing down kind of your wish list for that. Um, it's just kind of a good exercise to brain dump because like I said before, there's times where I've realized that, um, you know, the further along I get in my business, um, things come apparent to me that I think are things that I've wanted, but they've been like hidden deep within my heart. And it's like, you're afraid to kind of like let that out or put it out there because it might seem, you know, too out there, too, too crazy. But that's where that second step is. And that's inspiration. Um, not being afraid to set goals that are inspiring. You know, if your goals and your vision for your life are just pretty, you know, you know, basic, like you're not going to be motivated to work towards them or take those actions. So you need to be, you know, setting goals that inspire you. Um, and sh like I said, share it with people around you, share it with your spouse or your family or your best friend or whatever. And especially share it with your team, whether that's a team of you and one other coach, or you have 20 coaches on your team. Um, if you don't share your vision, you know, they're part of it. And so if, if they don't know where you're going there, there's no way they're going to be able to, you know, hop along. And the cool thing is about Beachbody too, is that, you know, the whole way our teams are built is that typically, you know, um, it's like my goals align with my coach's goals and their goals, you know, to a certain extent, not life goals, but business goals. And so that what, that's what makes this whole train thing kind of fun. And when I talk about momentum in your team, um, that's what helps pick up momentum. But it's when everybody in your team kind of knows, okay, where are we going? And then you start to see this happen and you see, um, you know, people growing their team and it just kind of starts happening organically. Um, and then the third thing is taking action. So if you've broken down your vision, you've realized what's important to you in life and in your business, then you need to make an action plan. So this is like your tangible stuff. This is, you've already done the dreaming and now you need to sit down and, you know, figure out what are the small steps I'm going to take over time that's going to get me you know, to these specific goals. Um, and I encourage you to just not just, you know, set a vision board for the year and then leave it at that. Like you need to reverse engineer that, break it down quarterly, break it down monthly, break it down weekly. Um, I feel like the more you can kind of hone in onto those specific goals, um, then it starts to seem less daunting. You know, you don't feel like it's this huge task, like it breaks it down and makes it seem, okay, I can actually attain this. So giving yourself a specific action plan is super important. And especially if you're pushing for something like elite this year, um, breaking breaking the elite goal guide down is, um, is going to help you so much because you don't want to be like stressing out at the end of the year. So, you know, when you can see, you know, what you've done January, February, March, and realize where you're lacking, where realize where you need to put more focus, you can start now taking action on those specific areas. So if you're going for elite, don't just say you're going for elite, really try to break it down so that you're hitting specific goals throughout the year and you're not trying to just 
cram it in right at the end of the year. Um, and so talking about clarity, I thought I would just kind of share a little bit more about my journey and, um, you know, just kind of those moments of clarity, because like I said, you know, my first whole year in the business, I really didn't have a vision, but as I started to see that Beachbody could be, you know, the, the vehicle for me to be able to stay home with my kids. And I realized that that was something I truly desired. Um, I started to treat it much more like the business I wanted it to be. So you hear that a lot. You hear treat, treat your business um, like it's the business you want it to be, not necessarily the business that it is currently, but you start taking it seriously um, and showing up every day, you will start to see these things happen. So um, I would say, you know, I, I definitely had some aha moments before this, but the new leader conference last year was definitely a huge time for me when I heard from, you know, leaders who, you know, were talking a lot about vision and talking a lot about sharing that with your team. And it started to make me realize like that, I did have a team that could hit this big goal if we wanted to, and I really wanted to, you know, show them what was possible, right? Like that's a huge part of being a leader is just showing your team what is possible. Um, so got back from new leader conference, like I said, baby Graham came about three weeks later. Um, it was definitely kind of a whirlwind as you can imagine. I don't have, you know, it, I, I honestly cannot tell you how I specifically kept things afloat, but I think the fact that I had built momentum before I, um, had the baby that, you know, I was able to, you know, still like enjoy my maternity leave and all that. And, um, but it just became clear to me at that time that I was like, I don't want to go back to my job. I don't want to go back to night shifts with the baby. Um, so in May last year, I decided to resign from my nursing job that, you know, I worked as labor and delivery nurse for a decade. And that was definitely a hard decision to make but um, it was definitely one of those pivotal moments where I like knew I was making the right decision for our family that aligned with our vision um, for what we saw you know as far as our home life goes and as far as you know me being home with our babies and then July we went to summit for the first time um, definitely major vision reinforcement happened there. I would say um, the biggest, you know, moments for me were listening to Gary V speak and him just really, you know, I, I definitely um, respond well to like, you know, real talk, truth bombs, like just laying it out there. And, you know, just the fact that, um, you know, you can have a vision, but if you're not taking action and you're not willing to put in the work and you're not patient and, you know, then it's not going to happen. And I just remember leaving Summit just being determined that I was not going to be one of the ones that like just let it all far, fall apart and just gave up on my vision. So um, we worked really hard through the end of last year and we finished in the top 200 um, elite, which was just crazy. I mean, it literally was surreal. Um, so anyways, I just want to, um, take it all back to perspective. So I put this in here because, um, you know, perspective is the part of your whole vision that kind of keeps you in check and reminds you that when, um, things are tough or when you're having a slower month and you're on that entrepreneur roller coaster, um, if you've read that book, but, um, you know, your perspective of I'm doing a job that is first requiring me to take care of myself, to get healthy, um, to share that with others. Like this is a pretty cool gig. So, um, whenever I felt overwhelmed or stressed by it and I, and I wasn't having fun, I always try to go back to that perspective of like, I'm so lucky that I can do this from home, um, can stay home with my babies. And, um, you know, it just, it helps keep you in check when you're feeling like things are hard, but that's just part of being an entrepreneur and part of a business like this. Um, so here is my 2017 vision board and, um, it's a little bit scattered here. And as you can see, you know, there are personal goals on here. There's some fun goals. Like I'd love to do some things in my kitchen, but then there's also a lot of things about family time. Um, there's things about my team and then there's also, you know, things about just my life and, um, it doesn't have to, you know, first of all, I know a lot of this probably just looks like a foreign language, but you know, I look at this and I know exactly what it all means. And this is what kind of, you know, looking at this is what helps me every single day, you know, remember what I'm working towards. So, um, I'm going to 
I have this little top tips and then I'm going to stop sharing the screen because it bothers me that I can't see everybody's face. But um, so my top tips are make your vision about you and your family. Don't compare yourself to others. That's so important. You're going to see that in this business. There are people that, you know, they want different things than you and you have to not get distracted by shiny bells and whistles and realize like what is important to you and your family and your mission and your purpose um, with this business? Like why has this opportunity come into your life and what are you supposed to make of it? Um, and then uh, personal development. I mean, it's one of our vital behaviors, but that's what keeps your mindset in check throughout the entire year. So especially if you're pushing for a big goal, you're going to have everybody has moments where, you know, they, <clears throat> they start to doubt themselves or, you know, things are not going as planned. And um, that's when you really need that personal development to keep your mindset in check and realize that, you know, you are worthy of, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting out of this um, and that you just have to keep focused on the vision, um, put it in a place, you know, your vision board where you can see it daily. So I recommend making it like, you know, you can make it the backdrop of your laptop or print it out, put it on a bulletin board. Um, you know, I know I was talking with Stephanie Davies a lot about this and she was like, we have our vision board, like, all over the house, you know, so that you can see it multiple times a day to just remind you every day, like why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and don't be afraid to reevaluate and adjust because like I said early on, you're constantly growing and changing. And so your vision's going to evolve, um, and make quitting, um, quitting on your vision, a non-negotiable. Like if you are in this business and you want to, you know, give it a fair chance and see what can happen, then you cannot even let your mind go down that road or talk about quitting. I've had coaches do that. I've seen it happen and it's just self-sabotage. So make that, you know, it's just a no from the beginning. Um, and don't let fear drive the train and don't be afraid to fail. So don't let fear drive the train. That comes from, um, I think it's Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't know if it's big magic or what, you know, I get confused with all the PD books, but, um, but she talks about how um, when, you're, when you're on that train and you're, you know, writing out your vision, fear is always there, but it doesn't get to drive. It doesn't get to make the choices. Um, and so don't be afraid to fail because we all do. And, you know, when you jump outside of your comfort zone, that's when growth happens. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a, a fun point I like to make. I'm going to try to see all you people now again and stop sharing. But, um, so yeah, I don't know. I hope that's helpful. I mean, I, I'm super passionate about like the whole vision thing because I feel like before I started Beachbody and even that first year, like I said, um, you know, I, uh, I don't feel like I had a super clear vision. I didn't even know what it was or what it meant. And it's just given me so much to think about, about life in general. Like I said, not just your business, but you know, and then sharing that with my husband, like we just now love to like talk about that. And it's kind of exciting. And we think back before Beachbody and I think, you know, we were both just doing our jobs and living the day-to-day -day life, but I just didn't feel like inspired. I didn't feel like much motivation. And now I feel like, you know, through Beachbody, you know, we can help other people like that's what living healthy, fulfilling lives, right? So it's just super exciting to put it out there. And like I said, when I made my vision board, the one I just shared with you, I actually made a like rendition of it. And then like the next night I went back and I edited a few things on it. And what I edited were the things that I hadn't put on it because I thought, well, no, like that's it's not going to happen. You know, like I was like, I'm not putting it on there, even though it was in my brain. It was like, I couldn't put it on the vision board. And then the next night I went back and I put it on there, even though it seems kind of crazy. And that's kind of revolving around my husband being home from his job and, um, you know, pursuing the business that he, you know, his entrepreneur journey. He has a whole business plan that he wants to do that in the past I've totally thought was crazy, right? Like he's the breadwinner. We have three kids. He carries our health insurance and to ever think that he would ever leave corporate would, you know, it just, it doesn't even, I'm like, no, that'd be stupid. And now it's like, I've left my job and I've seen other families be able to do this and no slam on anybody that works a corporate job because I think that everybody needs to just, you know, everybody has a place somewhere and, but I just feel like it's important to not give up on 
you know, maybe something that's going to give you a little bit more fulfillment and just don't be afraid to, to put it on there and to share it. Um, and it, even if it doesn't happen, you know, within the time frame that you're hoping it will, like, you know, it, hopefully just putting it out there will help it happen at some point. So that's kind of all I have for you. Um, I hope that made some sense. I, you know, I totally am open to like any sort of questions or anything like that. Um, Absolutely. But you're yeah, really mommy brain today, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No, 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 that was absolutely fantastic. And I know we'll have some questions. Um, I've got a couple. Guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the uh, chat box. That way we can kind of keep this at somewhat of a, of a, of a short time for, for Amy so she doesn't have to stick here all night when she's got kids out. Um, but definitely chat, throw them in the chat box. Um, one of the things I do want to say that, I, that you said that I love is the, uh, the treat your business like a business – but treat your business like the business you want it to be. And we hear that, we hear a lot, treat your business like a business. Don't treat it like a hobby, treat it like a business. But there's a difference between treating it like a business and treating it like the business you want it to be. When you came, so did you choose to, was it after Summit that you decided I wanna go elite, I'm gonna go for this? Or was it before Summit? I would say it really was after the new leader conference, you know, okay. that I was like five star elite is, is the goal, you know? And so even though I was having a baby like three weeks later and it was kind of crazy, like, I don't know, like I said, it's kind of a blur, but that time was like one of the like strongest times in my business, you know, like I'm sure that you guys have experienced that where you have some months where you're like, Hey, has any, anybody like want to join me? Hey, like, remember me? And then you have months where like all of a sudden, you know, people do start kind of coming to you. And that's because of that compound effect of like, I've talked to so many people over the last, you know, two years or whatever, but like, the weekend that I had Graham, I signed up like four new coaches. I literally like, I was lying in the hospital bed. Like they're like, honey, you should rest. They turn off the light. And I'm like, I was like recruiting one of my coaches. I was like, okay, here's your sign up link. Like I was determined, like I left the new Lear conference with just so much fire. And I think, you know, one thing is to be said about creating a vision is it gets you excited. And then people like sense that and they want to be a part of that. And so I think that that was like a huge reason why last year, like especially the beginning of last year, I had some great momentum in my business because I seriously, like I really had no shame about sharing what I was doing. I was just like pumped up, jacked up, like this is the best thing everyone should do it. Um, and so, you know, that's why it is important to try to get yourself to super Saturdays and any type of coach event that you can. Um, because that's what gets you, you know, re-energized again. Um, but definitely new leader conference was like where I made that, you know, okay, five star leads to the end of the year goal. And then summit, I woke up on, you know, at summit and I like checking my downline and I was a diamond and I'm like, uh, what happened? Like, I didn't see that coming, you know? And so I'm like, Hmm, okay. So this is going to be you know, this is challenging, but then, you know, sitting through all the stuff at summit and I don't know how much of your team was at summit. I didn't have a large amount of my team at summit. And part of the reason I think was, it was my first summit. So like people hadn't seen me there before, but now this coming year, I'm going to have like, I mean, I don't even know how many, probably at least 10, which last year I had one. So, um, people like literally bought their tickets right away because they saw how jacked I was after we left summit and like, listening to Gary and I'm like, I, I just learned so much about myself and how like I work well with tough love. Like if I need a little like spanking, like get out of your own way type of talk, I just put on Gary V podcast in the car when my kids are not in the car, but you know, when I'm by myself and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I'm going to do this. Um, and so you just have to find out like what drives you, you know, cause the same things that drive me are not going to drive the next person, you know? And so when you kind of figure out what that is and what gets you excited, because this business is fun, right? Like it should be fun. If it gets, if it's not fun and it's becoming stressful and there's anxiety, then you need to change what you're doing and not worry about what other people are doing, but change what you're doing so that you're not miserable and you're having a good time getting where you're going. I love that. And I'm sorry. I love that you just, I love that you said that business, everything started changing when you started getting excited about it. 
right? Like, so some of us on this call right now have no idea what elite is. They have no idea what some, I mean, like some of the, some coaches are new to this and, the, and this might be a little bit like higher level over the head kind of thing. Here's the deal. This is where it translates. And this is what I love. That's not just true for, for elite or something or anything like that. That same thing is true for if you just start coaching and you're talking to a challenger, right? Or you're talking to people sharing excitement for what you're doing, regardless, sharing excitement for your vision. Maybe your vision is helping three people this month. Maybe it's helping 10 people this month. Maybe it's, you know, starting your first challenge group, whatever it is, sharing your excitement about that and sharing that vision and knowing or having that vision and knowing that that's when things start to change. You know, just like, just like Amy was saying, when all of a sudden, when she started getting excited and she started sharing everybody, with everybody about Summit and about her elite goals and all that great stuff, everything started shifting, right? Like, I love that you brought that up because it's so true. Yeah, no, that, that's amazing. Deb, do you have a question? Yeah, no, I kind of have a, sorry, no question. <laughs> kind of, um, like, you just actually said I was, I wrote it down and then you added on to it when you're like, for one, Gary Vee is awesome. So if you guys haven't checked him out, definitely check him out. I actually saw a quick video, you know how he does those quick video snippets today about fear. And I love that you said, you know, I just had no shame. Yeah. And so I just went out there and I shared my excitement. And that's what Gary was saying today. He's like, it's not fear of failure. It's fear of failure in front of people. It's not that you're really afraid that you're not going to make it. You're afraid of what people are going to perceive you to yeah. be. And so you, you eliminate that and you're like, I am who I am. Failure or not, I'm going to be proud because I'm going to push and I'm going to do my best. And I love that you shared that you're like, I had no shame. I was just me. I was raw. I was vulnerable. And that comes through, right? Like we, we all try to want to, we want to be these like, like cutter images of, of top coaches. And that's not what makes us us. That's not what attracts people to us. It's, it's being raw and going, dude, I had one kid peeing on me, one kid puking on me and another one had gum in their hair but I'm still making it work. And that's, you know, that's, people can relate to that. And so I think that that's fantastic. Well, I can say that like, whenever I post stuff that is really real and raw and it's not trying to sugarcoat anything, that's when I get the most engagement and people are talking to me because they're like, I'm there right now. We're doing this together today, like in the trenches of motherhood. Right. And so I mean, I, I feel like that has been, you know, helpful for me throughout my business is just, I've really, I've tried to be that, you know, and sometimes I'll talk to somebody in person and they follow my social media and they'll be like, you know, you, but you just seem to have it all together. And sometimes I'm like, do I really put that out there? Because, okay, yeah, there are some days that it, it's all going okay. But like, I feel like I share that a lot where I'm like, you know, crazy life is happening. Um, and I'm just trying to be real with people because that's when you get people talking to you, you know, perfect, being perfect is not relatable. Like if somebody just saw somebody perfect on social media, they're not going to go ask them for help because you'd probably be intimidated. But, um, and yeah, like you said, kind of being shameless about it. Like I, and one thing I will admit to you too, is that, you know, that, that period of, you know, my business where I was like, yeah, yeah. Like that was great. And things were great. And then you like hit a slow month and it kind of knocks your confidence back a little bit. And you're like, is what I'm putting out there? Like even, does it matter? Is it reaching anybody? Because like now I just kind of feel like an idiot. Cause no one's like talking to me, but, um, you know, and so I've definitely gone through like some ups and downs with that as far as like your confidence. But, um, you know, when you're able to just somehow get yourself out of that funk. And I will admit, like I had a little bit of a post elite, like burnout where I was like, all right, where do I, where do I go now? Like I hit the 2016 goals and then I was kind of like orbiting around in space. Like, what am I supposed to do now? You know, like we were pushing for this. And then one day it's, you know, December 31st, the next day it's January 1st. And I'm like, okay, new year. Like where, what do we do now? And I, I'm not going to lie. Like it's taken me a while to kind of like get back into my groove, but you know, it helps like whenever I do just share like literally what it is that's going on from my heart, I always feel so much better too, you know, and I don't feel like I do the greatest on social media as far as like writing out how I'm feeling. And I know that my mother-in-law is out there judging my grammar. And I know that like I have former coworkers that are thinking, you know, okay, there's Amy again and whatever. She's making fun of me. I mean, I, I just, I've gotten over that. Like you kind of have to, you know, you, you kind of just have to brush that off and realize 
you know, if, if people are going to judge you or say anything about what you're doing, it's, it's really about them, you know? Um, yeah. So is there questions down there or, um, I no. think, okay. uh, I think the, I was, the other thing that I wanted to, to talk about that you, you, you hit was awesome that you're like, dream big. I think it's so easy for us all to want to be safe, right? I want to put, I want to put things on my vision board that I know I can hit, right? So it's, and I've been guilty of that. Like people are like, so when are you going to quit your job? And I'm like, oh, next year. And then the year would come and I'm like, oh, next year. But I wouldn't, I didn't want to put it on there because it was, it was, it was scary. It's right. It's a big, scary goal. So I'd say things like, hmm, I want to, you know, I don't know. I want to have more friends over and I want to build my relationship and, and I want to, you know, things that were safe that I knew that I could hit. And, but once I'm like, no, I'm going to put these things on there. I've got a dream car I want to get. I want to get a house cleaner. I want to quit my job. I want to go on that cruise that I didn't think I was going to get until three weeks before we were supposed to go on it. And then I got it. Yeah. So I, there's power in dreaming big and, and focusing, like you said, always looking at it. I actually have it right next to where I work out. So every single day when I'm like grunting and groaning, I'm staring at my vision that I want. And, and it's, it's very, very powerful. And so I love that you're like, don't just put down things that are safe, put down things, yeah. dream big, give yourself permission to do that. I had a coach that recently she had just like this mindset shift and it was kind of around that goal setting type of thing. Um, you know, and I just, I do want to put the disclaimer out there that, you know, like we've said, you know, some people are in it and they're just like fine with, you know, not even hitting success club, you know? And then there's people that are like, I just want to hit success club. And then sometimes I feel like I talk to coaches and they've set like success club five all the time. And then they end up hitting like three or four every month. And then we're talking about it. And it's like, I just realized like they're not inspiring themselves at all to do anything. Like they're not like setting the bar a little bit higher. And so like this one coach in particular, I was just like, you've got to just set your bar higher because if you set it high and it seems totally outlandish, like what, what's going to happen? Like you're at least going to propel yourself closer to it. Like I started setting my success club goal at like success club 20. And I was like, that seems kind of crazy because I'd only ever have like one month where I hit over 20, you know? And, but then like the last part of last year, I hit over 20, like three months in a row. And I started talking to this coach about that and it was like, she had this mindset shift. And I think that she got over the hump that, you know, she realized like she's completely capable of doing what I'm doing. And I have to realize I'm capable of doing what the top coaches are doing. If, if I want to do it, like we all are, but we, we definitely give ourselves like these mental caps, but then it's like stunting our growth, you know? And so, um, you know, putting that stuff out there, the big stuff and the little stuff, because if you would have asked me, you know, a year and a half ago or two years ago, like, you know, I remember looking at Stephanie Davies at the time who, when I signed up with her, she was like a two star diamond. And then, you know, she was like, ended the year, like seven star elite. And I just remember thinking, I mean, I'm never going to do that, you know? And it's like, it happened. And I didn't do anything that was like astronomically amazing. I just did small things every day. And I also like, you know, just had that. I, I, the thing with the coach that I was talking about and now I'm all over the place, but she had the shift in her mindset. I said, be stubborn about it. Like if you want this then go after it because you know, it, I, I feel like that's how it is with things like success club, you know, where people want to give up the last few days of the month. And I'm like, okay, you're still at success club zero. Okay. Let me tell you about my story about new year's Eve, 2015, where I woke up at success club two. I'd never missed success club before. And I was just like, I'm not missing it this month. You know, I was just like, it's not happening. And there's a difference between you pushing people for a sale and you pushing yourself. So instead of like pushing people and being like, Hey, buy this, I'll give you this gift or whatever. I pushed myself to just reach out to anyone and everyone I had ever like talked to followed up with them. It didn't feel icky because I wasn't pushing anybody, but I was just like, I'm going to increase my odds that I'm going to hit somebody. Right. And I mean, I went back through like a year and a half of, you know, messages. Did it, who can I talk to? Who can I talk to? 
And so I at still at like 2.30 PM, I was still at Success Club 2 and I hit 10 by the end of the night. And I was like, ah, I just wanted to hit Success Club 5 at that point. But, um, you know, it's about like, I had this stubborn mindset, you know, and and I just went after it and I didn't push anybody into a sale. I just pushed myself to like stretch way outside my comfort zone because I didn't want to give up on something that was important to me, you know? Um, but I love that, like Deanna, that you said that about your job, because that brings me to one other important thing. And that is that it's, it is important to put time frames on goals, but you don't have to just feel like a total failure when you don't hit them. I've set many goals that I, the date comes and goes and I haven't gotten there yet. I mean, last year, my summit goal was five star at summit. You know, that was what I said at New Leader Conference. I was a two-star, then I'm like, I want to be five-star at Summit. And like I said, I woke up as a diamond and I'm like, okay, so that didn't happen. So we're going to reevaluate, reflect on what, you know, what went maybe wrong, but we can't control everything either. So give yourself grace, you know, but, um, but definitely set like, you need to have tangible time frames because if you don't have a time frame, then you cannot reverse engineer your action plan. You know, so if you don't say, I want to hit this rank by this time, um, if you don't put a time on it, then how are you going to break that down into your monthly and weekly? So I've always done that. Like I said, I, I've missed many a goal, but, um, you know, same thing happened with two star goal. It was supposed to be two star by summit the previous year. It didn't happen until, you know, like December, but, but it's still important to put a time frame on it. So I'm curious about when you're going to quit your job, Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's heading that direction um I, I love that and and guys if you have goals if if in a larger conversation if you guys have goals and you don't know how to necessarily achieve them you like you know the goal but you don't know really what to do reach out to your coach or reach out to Dion and I and we will help you reverse engineer that so that you guys can fully understand what to do on a day-to-day -day basis but I love that you said that and I love the uh, well played man from one or from, from one to not from one to ten Success club points? Oh, insane. yeah. Day. Yeah, two to ten. I mean, I – and my team has heard yeah. that story, like, over and over again. That's what I always pop in at the end of the month. And I'm like, hey, guys, I'm going to tell you the little story again about how – you can make it happen in the last few hours if you're determined and if you're willing to just not stop talking to people. Um, it's like the work is really never done, you know? It just depends on if it aligns with what your goals are, you know? Like if you decide that personally missing that goal that month is is fine, then that's fine, you know? But if but for me, it, like I, it was a non-negotiable from the beginning that I'm hitting Success Club and I wasn't there yet and I was gonna go out kicking and screaming. Um, but like I said, in a, in a good way, like not in a way that made me feel like I was out there like hustling for a sale, but in a way that just stretched me and I think taught me a lesson about like, you know, what is possible, what you can do in the last part of the month. And just, gosh, I mean, I, I wish I knew how many people I reached out to again that day, but I was like a crazy lady, like, nope, it's going to happen. I'm going to find that person. There's people out there. They want to start with my new year's group. And so, yeah, it was kind of crazy. That's not like my typical story for the end of the month, but, um, but it can happen. And so, uh, I think a huge part of it is just having kind of that stubborn mindset, not wanting to, you know, give up on it. Yeah. And the, the, I love that you said not pushing your, not pushing the sale, but pushing yourself. That's epic. Um, so Deanna has a question. Um, I had a question before too. Yeah, okay, since you clearly do a lot of personal development because the only way somebody has that strong of, of, a, of, of a mindset is when they do a lot of personal development. That's why that's so important. So what, if you could only, if you could only actually, I'm going to change this. If you could only recommend one personal development book, which one would it be? Oh man, that's I know. So hard. <laughs> so hard. Um, uh, I don't know. Let me think. I have one in my head because I think it's really good. And I think it really lines up with like what we're talking about tonight. Um, so I guess I'll just say it cause it's the one in my head. Um, but the 10 X rule, I think rule. It's great. And it just lines up. I think I was reading the 10 X rule. Like it must've been right after summit. And so it was really like a good time for that because, and actually <laughs> I wasn't reading it. I was listening to it. 
thank God for Audible, right? I like to be like a little kid in my bed, like read me my bedtime story. I love to listen to my, you know, to my personal development. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've gotten a lot of my little like things that, you know, they stick in my brain and then I tell my coaches when they're struggling. Like, and I mean, I think that's where I got the whole setting inspirational goals thing. You know, he's like set goals that inspire you in life that are going to push you to grow as a person, to grow your business. And, you know, I mean, it, that that's what strengthens your mindset and keeps you going because as we all know, like it's, have you guys read the entrepreneur roller coaster? That's such a good one that just makes you realize that like it's normal to have lows and you know, we all have them. And what I've realized too is it's hard when you're having a low to watch someone else have a high, even though you're like happy for them, but you're like blinders, blinders. This is just part of it. It's part of it. We're all gonna fail, have slow months, you know, do things we wish that we had done a different way, but there's no like cut and dry way of running this business. Everyone runs it differently. Something, you know, it's, you can't look at somebody and say, I should be doing everything that they're doing because that's not going to work for you. So you have to just figure out what works for you. But okay. So I mentioned two books there. I snuck in a second one, but <laughs> we'll allow that. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's perfectly fine. Does anybody else have any questions at all? Feel free to throw it in that chat box if you do. Um, but otherwise, uh, if nobody's got any questions, I want to say thank you so very, very much for coming on and taking the time out of your night to talk to us tonight. That was amazing. Um, huge congratulations on Five Star Elite, by the way. And that, I can't wait to see Summit. You're going to be on stage at Summit. We're going to be shouting hi for you. Yeah. So uh, and well done. Huge round of applause on that. No other questions at all, guys? <laughs> okay. That's we're, I'm the same way on calls. A lot of times I'll be like, I don't want to ask. <laughs> I'm terrible about it. But uh, either way, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate the time again. And uh, everybody, you guys all have a fantastic night. And we will talk to everybody very soon. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.